to teach you the fundamentals of linear perspective. And I'm going to do that by showing you a little bit of uh, my childhood journey through drawing and art history, some practice sketches, and what a big final drawing in linear perspective will look like. When I was pretty young and I wanted to do a drawing for my mom. I wanted to draw her bedroom. And as I was working on it, I couldn't understand how I could draw the ceiling and the floor. What about the side walls? What if I draw the back wall? Looked at it for a while. And said, hmm. What if I drew a line coming out of the corners? And now I had a back wall, a ceiling, a floor, and the two side walls. Can you see that? I thought in my five or six year old brain that this was going to be a great drawing, but I still had to do the rest of the drawing. She had a closet and there was a built-in closet, sliding doors. So it kind of came off of this wall a bit here. So I angled the top of it down over here like this. And I drew it down there. It's like, okay, that's all right. Well, there was something hanging on the wall over here, a picture or a window. I went ahead and I drew that over there. I'm gonna draw that ugly ceiling fan that she has. It was a really ugly ceiling fan. With those chandelier things on it. And then it had one of those cords that you could pull down like that. Wall, ceiling, floor, closet, window, ceiling fan. She had a window right back here. And I thought, I gotta include the window. It was a horizontal window. And it went like that, all the way across. Now that is really looking like a, a room. And the window was broken up into different window panes. So I drew some lines. I'm proud, I went over to my mom and I said, Oh, look what I have done. And she looked at me and my mom, you have to understand, my mom has been always super supportive of my artwork. But she looked at me and she said, um, um, and I could tell something was wrong because my mom did not see the genius that just invented a system for linear perspective, or at least that's what I thought. What she saw was completely different. She didn't see a room, but she saw a dog that was run over by a car. Bear with me. This is what she saw. Imagine a puppy that had puppy ears. Those are its eyes. Here, little tongue sticking out because you know, it's dead. These lines here are not to show the side wall, but they're puppy paws, legs. So let's show some puppy paws. And a puppy paw here. I know that's somewhat puppy paws look like. And another one over there. That closet, well, that's just a tail. A little fluffy tail. What's the ceiling fan? Well, the window and the ceiling fan. The window are the tire tracks of the car that ran over the dog and the ceiling fan is, well, what happened to the dog after it got run over. <laughs> so the moral of my story is, first, don't underestimate yourself because, hey, if I can figure out linear perspective at five or six, you guys could do anything, trust me. Second, Whenever you see a kid's artwork, never walk up to it and be like, oh, you drew a dead dog or something like that. <laughs> you always ask the kid, hey, tell me a little bit about your drawing. <laughs> you don't wanna scar them for life. Sorry, mom. Okay, but in all reality, this is the foundation of linear perspective. Linear perspective is where you have lines that converge. They're orthogonal lines that go to a vanishing point.
So all of those lines, those puppy legs, all go to a vanishing point right here in the middle. And that's a way that we can help create the illusion of space when we're drawing in a two-dimensional field, something that's flat. So let me explain that without the dog. I think we've seen enough of the dog, right? Pause the video and write down these key vocabulary words, orthogonal lines, vanishing point, and horizon line. So one of the ways that I can explain linear perspective uh, quickly is by thinking about a tunnel. This is the Holland Tunnel going from New Jersey into New York City. And as you can, if you were driving there, you would know that all of those lines that you see are parallel. But when we look at them right now, they all converge into one point, kind of in the middle to the bottom of the picture. And we can see them all right here. And that's the fundamentals of linear perspective is that you have a vanishing point that is at eye level or at your horizon line. So this is one point perspective, sometimes called frontal perspective. And that is because you're looking at it straight on and not from an angle. So you can see this kind of weird, I don't know, city with, I think those are telephone poles, not crosses. And maybe billboards or random monoliths in a desert. But anyway, you have a vanishing point on the horizon line and all of the lines in this picture that are receding, they're orthogonal lines going back to the vanishing point and in proportion. So the things toward the back are smaller, the things toward the front are bigger. Bigger things to the front, smaller things to the back. And how we organize that is through linear perspective. So our verticals stay vertical, but our horizontals always go back to the vanishing point. So we can see that if we have a flat box, imagine you're in a desert and the horizon line is separating the sky from the ground and you have a box just dropped straight in front of you. So you draw a square or a rectangle. And then from your view, because you're taller than box, you can draw lines back to the vanishing point. This is the end of the box. And then we erase the lines and we have a box in the middle of a desert. If this part is a little confusing, there's tons of resources on the internet if you just Google one point perspective how to. These are some examples from very simplistic views to much more complicated views, both inside and outside views of one point perspective. So how did we come up with the system? Well, it all goes back to a place I lived for nine years. Does anyone know where this is? This is Florence, Italy. And that is the Duomo, the cathedral in the center of the city. Santa Maria del Fiore is uh, one of the most famous churches in the world. And one of the reasons why it's so famous is because of that really, really big dome on top of it. It took a long time to get that dome created, but that's another video. But one thing that you need to know is who designed that dome. And that is, anyone know? Filippo Brunelleschi. You may have heard of him before. He's kind of famous. And he was around during the Renaissance and he was a Renaissance man. Filippo Brunelleschi was a very creative thinker and liked to problem solve things. And one of the things he problem solved was linear perspective. He came up with the formula that we know today. So if you look him up, you may see lots of different information about him, but you'll also see his work on linear perspective. And he came up with this idea of looking at windows, uh, mirrors and lines and sight lines and it's still the same formula we use today, using a horizon line and a vanishing point and conversion lines that go back to that vanishing point. And one of the things he did with that is he told his buddy, Masaccio. Now Masaccio was a young painter who got a job to do a painting in this beautiful church right around the corner from the other one. And this is called Santa Maria Novella. It's one of my favorite churches in the world. And when you enter the church, on the opposite wall is the painting that he did where he applied linear perspective. 
Oh, and when he did it, everyone in the church was like totally amazed because, you know, they had never seen anything with this amount of depth created. People have been trying, but they weren't quite getting it right. Remember, this is the early Renaissance. So we're coming out of the late Middle Ages where religious figures were frozen in a field of gold in artworks. And as they started to transition into creating three-dimensional space, it was a little awkward. But Masaccio was able to create a sense of depth in his painting. You want to see it? Here it is. I know you may th be thinking it's not terribly realistic, but you have to remember they didn't have a lot of visual imagery as we do today. They weren't like on their phones all the time and everything. What they did have was this painting that was made to look like it was built into the church with the architecture. And the people in the church, uh, in the painting, are actually uh, representatives of the patrons of the painting. So they knew them and they were life size. And can you see in here the illusion of depth that Masaccio created with linear perspective? Do you see how he used it? In this ceiling, you can see all of the lines of the cut in arch go back to a vanishing point, which is down on the ground. So it sort of keeps all of the perspective of Christ in the middle. Now, artists after that, very famous artists like Sandro Botticelli applied one point linear perspective in his artwork. And this helped create the sense of depth. Do you see where he used it in this painting? That's right, the floor. The floor lines all go back into space at a vanishing point off into the horizon line. Now, if we look at some student work, you can see how students applied the same technique. Looking at our sky bridge that's filled with windows, we can see even through here, all the shadows and all of the lines all converge at a vanishing point back here on the horizon line. And everything is bigger as it's closer to us and things that are further away are smaller. So for this unit, we're going to start with a formative assessment of drawing a fictional room. And this will be our practice, how we can learn the techniques. After that, we will have our summative assessment, which will be drawing a room into a room from direct observation. And this will be a lot more detailed and a lot more sophisticated in our techniques and application of skills. We will have detailed videos and demonstrations on how to do all the skills for each of those assessments 